Okay, this is a talk meant for a general audience uh, that was planned to be given as a press conference at the American Physical Society March meeting in Denver uh, before it was canceled for COVID-19. And it pertains to uh, a paper we were presenting there on Bayesian evidence accumulation on social networks. Why is that an important problem? Well, we live in large social networks and every day make complex decisions using both our um, own personal uh, social information based on what our friends think uh, and, and, and in Twitter and our physical friendship network spaces and in other social media. And we also use our non-personal sort of private information sources in order to make decisions like reading books, watching TV, reading the newspaper, watching the news, doing our own personal research. So as part of this work, we really just wanted to ask questions about uh, how people combine these information sources to make decisions. And in order to lens that in the cleanest way we, we thought possible, we, we thought, well, what, what's, what's the best way to do that? And so in order to demonstrate this, uh, I want to take an example of uh, maybe an individual that's uh, deciding who to vote for in the primary. Uh, back when APS was happening, uh, Elizabeth Warren uh, was still in the race, and so they might be trying to decide between whether they should vote for Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders in the Democratic primary in their state. And they're using news sources, books, their own social network in order to make this decision. Now, let's say that they're unbiased to begin with. Well, then they need the same amount of evidence to make a Warren decision as they would a, a Bernie decision. And maybe they read a news article that points in the direction of Warren, watch a TV show that, that points them in the direction of Bernie, get some uh, feedback from folks on Twitter that suggests they should vote for Warren, Facebook friends maybe point them more towards Bernie, but maybe let's say they read uh, Warren's biography and then they decide, well, I, th I think I want to vote for Warren in this primary. Well, if the, another person got the same piece of evidence or sequence of evidence and used it in the same way, but started off with a Warren bias, it turns out after just reading, reading that first news article, they might have enough evidence uh, to favor Warren because they were already leaning towards Warren and they just need a little bit of evidence to tip them over the edge. But an individual that has a Bernie bias might uh, read that first news article and then watch a TV show and decide to go to Bernie because now they've received enough evidence to sort of tip them over the edge in favor of Bernie. So you can see here that depending on people's individual biases, this gives us uh, not, not only a picture of how they'll make decisions, but how we should uh, guide our beliefs about the decisions that, that, that they've made. So for instance, uh, Sean King, uh, one of the main organizers of, of Black Lives Matter, if uh, this voter here is looking to see who Sean King endorses and notices they endorse Sanders, then they might think, well, assuming that Sean King was unbiased, they would have needed this amount of evidence in order to make a Bernie decision. But it turns out that Sean King endorsed Bernie Sanders in 2016, and so he may have only needed uh, just a little bit of evidence in order to make a, a decision this time. So knowing that Sean King endorsed Bernie in 2020, only gives us maybe incremental evidence uh, in favor of Bernie because uh, he was he was already biased in favor of that. So in order to think about uh, how this might play out when watching an individual that's uh, both undecided and eventually decided for a candidate, let's think about the case where agent two here, or person number two, is represented by this red circle, uh, is is making a decision between two candidates, and Agent 1 is uh, also making the same decision between two candidates, but advertises their decision once they make it. They announce their endorsements once they make it. So if we sort of zoom into Agent 1's decision-making process, and we know that, let's say, they're biased in favor of, of Sanders to start with, 
they only need that little bit of evidence to make a decision in favor of Bernie and a lot to make it in favor of Warren. Meanwhile, Agent 2 is collecting their own sequence of information. And then they see that, oh, well, it turns out Agent 1 did make it, get enough evidence to decide in favor of Bernie. And so that gives me a little bit of incremental evidence in favor of Bernie. And then I may receive my own private information sources. Again, maybe the news, maybe um, uh, reading books of my own. And then we'll make a decision in favor of Warren. On the other hand, if Agent 1 makes a decision in favor of Warren, that will immediately propel the belief of Agent 2 in the direction of, of Warren. So the, this, this person, because they see this, this person 1 make a decision in favor of Warren, that tips the balance in, in Warren's favor as far as they're concerned. So that's the two cases where we talk about person 1 either making a Warren or a, or a Bernie decision. But what about the case where they're undecided? It turns out if they're undecided, we know that they're already biased in favor of Bernie, so the fact that they're undecided means, well, they should have chose in favor of Bernie by now, if they sort of take long enough. So that actually gives us evidence that they're, they're tipping in favor of Warren in that case. So the person, person two, that's collecting evidence either in favor of Warren uh, or Sanders, because they see, well, after some period of time, this individual is still undecided, that means they, they should have chosen Bernie by now, so that suggests they must have gotten some evidence in favor of Warren. We can do something similar in the case where both pe person one and person two exchange uh, information with each other, but this exchange process basically has to be um, updated multiple times in response to the fact that if, if I see that you're undecided and I use that to update my own belief, then you'll know that I'm doing that and you'll use my indecision to update your belief. And this is somewhat similar to the conversation that uh, Vizzini has with Dread Pirate Roberts in uh, the 1987 film Princess Bride. Vizzini is trying to decide which glass of wine Dread Pirate Roberts is poisoned and goes through uh, what one might call the, the process of common knowledge or sort of squeezing out uh, the information that he can glean from Dread Pirate Roberts by knowing uh, what Vizzini himself would do. That governs the decisions that Dread Pirate Roberts would make, but Vizzini also knows that as well. So essentially Vizzini says, I know uh, what you know that I know, and you know what, what I know, what you know, and, and so on. And so this recursive process, this feedback process of exchanging uh, information uh, causes an update in beliefs uh, where even indecisions can provide information uh, from one agent to another. We've also looked at the case where uh, maybe this agent three here or person three here does not observe person one directly, but knows that person two's decisions are influenced by person one. And so in the process, person three can actually glean information about maybe the decisions that, that person one is making. We've also looked at the case of large uh, clicks that are all connected to each other, so that when one person makes a decision, that triggers the decision of many other agents um, in the click. And because in this case, there's sort of uh, a majority of agents that have made that decision. That will then steer uh, a second wave of, of decisions in that same direction. And so all of this is triggered by a single agent making a decision. And this is a process that's often called herding. But in this case, we're finding it in a temporal education uh, uh, evidence accumulation process. And so this type of thing we think could happen on, on Twitter networks um, or on Facebook even. And, uh, and the plan is eventually to look at Twitter data to see how uh, beliefs sort of propagate on Twitter, given maybe one individual that, that uh, influences the, the decisions of a lot of other people. I just want to acknowledge my collaborators, Bargav Karamchet, who has just taken a job at Florida State in the fall, Simon Stolarczyk, who was a, a PhD uh, from University of Houston in 2018, and 
Gresher Yosich, who's a uh, faculty in math at University of Houston. This paper is uh, currently in press at SIAM Journal of Applied Dynamical Systems. And uh, we think it uh, has, has a big impact on how people should think about uh, how individuals make decisions in the, in the context of large social networks and how their beliefs may be steered by uh, both the opinions of their friends on those social networks and even knowing the, the biases of, of, their, of their friends on social networks. Thank you.